So we're here today with Robert Connell Clark, cannabis researcher. So Rob, in your new book, you talk about new ways of uh, naming the different types of cannabis. Uh, how do you come up with these names? And well, I explain a little bit. All right. Um, basically, what we're talking about here is the field of taxonomy. This is uh, putting scientific names usually called binomials, they come in two parts. Cannabis is the genus name. And then there are different types of cannabis, just like there are different types of Clarks. There's Roberts, and there's Michaels, and there's different species of Clarks. The scientists use, traditionally used the floral characteristics of plants. Uh, we knew from that the cannabis and humulus, the hop plant, are related because their flowers are very similar. But more recently, we've come up with other ways of viewing plants, and this is based largely on their chemistry. So we call this branch of taxonomy chemotaxonomy. And the chemicals we look for in all organisms range from DNA, the actual chemical structure that determines the genes, all the way through to what are called secondary products, the cannabinoids in the case of cannabis, THC and CBD, and the terpenes and other flavoring um, elements in the essential oils of cannabis. So these are now used to make a new taxonomic system for cannabis. And we use this in our new book, and we use it because it makes good sense, but it's going to differ a lot from what you already understand. Right up until recently, the way we saw cannabis, and the way you and I and everyone viewed it who is studying this, is that there were two species, we still stick with this, but we saw that cannabis sativa was the larger species. It encompassed European hemp, its escaped plants in North America, um, the Central Asian hemp, hemp all across China and Korea and Japan. This was all considered cannabis sativa. Then there were the drug sativas, as people call them today. This is the common lingo. These were originated in uh, India, and they were spread to the New World. So these were your Indian, South Indian, Thai, Colombian, Mexican, Jamaican, these traditional varieties. So we saw sativa as being the big, the big species that encompassed almost everything. And indica, as we know it today, was just from Afghanistan. This was uh, originally from Afghanistan, spread a bit through the Muslim world for ash making. But it was the smaller, by far the smaller and less diverse of the two species, sativa and indica. Well, to quote the Farsight Theater from our jaded youth, everything we knew was wrong. And I'm sorry for correcting everything now. This is going to throw people for a loop. But we now see things completely differently. Cannabis sativa really is only European hemp. And it was never used for drug use. It, it was only used for fiber and seed production. It has a limited range of Europe and Eastern Europe and places like uh, Kansas where it's been introduced and escaped as ditch weed. It doesn't really have the potential to produce drugs. And none of the cultures associated with cannabis sativa were drug using cultures. Cannabis indica, on the other hand, is now seen as being all the rest of the cannabis in the world which includes Chinese, Korean, and Japanese hemp, all the hemp of China, Southeast Asia, across India, Africa, and all the introductions into the New World. So yay, cannabis is, indica is the larger species. It's, it's, it's the big dog. But cannabis indica is divided into four species. Okay? We used to consider one and a subspecies. Cannabis indica, subspecies indica, is the original indica as it was described by Lamarck in the 19th, 18th century. And this is a narrow-leafed type of drug, of drug plant. This is what people now call sativas, okay? But they're not. They're subspecies indica, cannabis indica, species indica, subspecies indica, the true indica from India. That's what the name means. So it's what is spread to the New World into Southeast Asia, what we 
think of as sativas presently, but this terminology will change. We call them in our new book narrow leaf drug varieties, or NLDs for short. The other three species of indica are a possible wild relative or feral escape, most, like, most likely, of cannabis indica. This is called subspecies Kafiristanica. Doesn't really weigh into our, our discussion much. Then we have the other drug variety, which is called indica by everyone in the, in the modern parlance. And it is cannabis indica subspecies Afghanica, because it comes originally from Afghanistan. You call them indicas. We presently, in the new book, and will continue to call them broadleafed drug, or BLD, varieties. The third one has the potential as well to produce THC. All these indica plants have the potential genetically to produce THC. They may not have been bred for it, and they may have relatively low levels, although they have the potential. This is an example, is, is the way Cannabis indica subspecies chinensis from China originally has evolved. And it is found also in Korea and Japan. And we know that they have the potential to produce drugs because escape varieties on Hokkaido Island and on the Korean Peninsula escape from hemp fiber production and seed production produce enough THC that local people get high on. So we know the potential is there. So this is the basic difference. Now we see cannabis indica variety Afghan, uh, subspecies Afghanica, what we now call indica, is truly an indica. It's broadleaf drug indica. But what we call sativas are actually indicas as well. Cannabis indica subspecies indica, which is the narrow leaf drug varieties. So in sum, Cannabis indica is huge, covers almost the entire world, where cannabis sativa is very small. Cannabis sativa is restricted to fiber and seed production, where cannabis indica is used worldwide for drug as well as fiber and seed production. So sorry to throw you for a loop here, but this will make a lot more sense when you look at the way the plant evolved, its history, and the interrelationship with human cultures. This new book, written by Mark Merlin at the University of Hawaii and myself, this Cannabis Evolution and Ethnobotany takes a very long look at the human cannabis relationship. What we have done for cannabis to make it the crop plant that we depend on for, for millennia, and what cannabis has done to help with the evolution and formation of our cultures, religions, social systems as we know them today. So this is a deep read. It's published by University of California Press. It's a textbook. It's a reference book. It's the real deal. It's full of lots of good information. So step up. Take the challenge. Buy a copy. Read it. Yeah, they're going to learn something. See you soon. Thank you, Rob. And we'll um, go into more depth on some of those other topics in the book later. Thank you. Absolutely.